Hello, this is William from Visual Components. In this video, I'm going to show you how to generate numbers using a distribution property. And I'm going to create the property using Python API. To get started, I'll go to the Modeling tab. If you do not have access to the Modeling tab, you can create an add-on to complete this tutorial. I'll now create a new component, add a box or block feature. I'll now click the Behaviors drop-down menu here and then click Python script to add that behavior and open its editor. We are going to add the property to the component of this script, so we can delete these lines of code for now. Let's now get the component object. So I'll write comp equals get component. And before we create the property, let's check to see if it already exists in the component. So I'll write prop equals comp.getProperty. This allows you to find a property by name. Let's look for a property called test distribution. Now if this property does not exist, we have to create it. So I'll write if not prop, prop equals comp dot create property. And this allows you to create a property of a given type and name. So the type for a distribution property is VC underscore distribution. And we will name the property test distribution. Now this property type can only accept the default constraint, which in this case is a real number. Let's now define the distribution for generating that real number. So I'll write prop dot distribution equals, and you have to write an expression and pass it as a string. So let's use a normal distribution. So its function is normal. Notice the parentheses here. The first argument is the mean value, so let's use a mean of 10.0. The second argument is the standard deviation, so let's use 2.0. Let's now check the value of our distribution five times. So we'll write a simple for loop, so for i in range 5, let's print the value of the property. So print prop dot value. And what do you expect to happen? Every time we check the value of our distribution property, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, we're going to get a new number. So if I compile the code, go to the component graph panel, I'll select the properties checkbox here, and underneath the root node there's the properties element, I'll expand it, there's our test distribution property, and if we go to the output panel, ho -ho, we can see five different values. Let's check the value of the distribution again, so in our script, Let's add some white space, or a divider, so I'll print some dashes. If I compile the code, let's see what happens. So I'll make my output panel a bit bigger. There we go. And you can see when we checked the property the first five times, we got these set of numbers. And then when we checked it again, we got a new set of numbers. But let's see what happens when we check the value of the distribution during a simulation. So in our script, let's use the on run event. I'll write define on run. And let's actually add this code block here to our on run event. So I'll just select it and indent it so it's now inside the on run event. I'll compile the code. And if we run our simulation and reset it, we can see that during the simulation at the start, we got this set of five numbers. And now if we were to run the simulation again and reset, we can see we got the exact same set of numbers. That's because this distribution we created, it uses a stream of data with a seed value. So the seed value for your distribution defines its initial state. So when you start the simulation, the seed value, you know, it hasn't changed, it's still the same, and that's why you get the same numbers the first five times. Now, if you want to, you can use a different stream for your distribution. So every layout that you have in the 3D world has a layout item that contains 64 streams. And each stream can have its own seed value. So if you're familiar with distributions, if you have one stream that has this seed value and another stream that has a different seed value, they're going to generate different numbers that are unique to that stream. So to reference these streams, we can use the random stream attribute of our distribution property. 
and we can reference the strings by using an index between 0 and 63. So let's use 10, compile our code, and if we run the simulation, reset it, run it again, and reset it, go to our alpha panel, we can see we're getting the same numbers over and over again when we start the simulation. Now why do you think that happens? It's happening because by default these 64 streams in a layout they have the same seed value. So if you want to get different values you can just change the seed value of the stream you're using. To give you an example, let's actually get the application object in our script. So I'll write app equals get application and the streams of a layout are a layout item and you can access layout items from the application object. So you can use app.findLayoutItem and the name of the layout item is called random seeds. Let's now check the properties of this random seeds layout item. So I'll write for p in streams dot properties. Let's print the property name and its value. So let's actually clear our output panel, compile our code, and ho ho, we can see, yes, we have these random seeds or random streams and their seed value. So random seed zero has a seed value of one. And if we scroll all the way down, we can see that each stream has the same exact seed value all the way down to 63. So if we want to get different values, we have to change the seed value. So over here, we're using random stream 10. So in our script, let's comment this out. We don't need to print the properties anymore because we know what we're doing. And I'll write streams dot random seed 10. And I'm now going to change the seed value. Let's change it to 400. So if I compile the code, clear my output panel, run the simulation, reset, run it again, reset, I get what I expect. I get a unique set of numbers every time I run the simulation and they're the same set of numbers. So when you're using these pseudo random numbers, you have a certain amount of control. So if you were to modify the layout, share it with somebody, they're gonna get the same values from the distribution when they run the simulation. So if we were to use, let's say in our distribution, a different stream that has a different seed value, let's see what happens. So if, instead of actually defining the, or assigning a value to the random stream attribute here, you can define it in your expression when you create the distribution. So that can be the first argument in the function. So let's use a stream of 50. So here's my expression. I'm using a normal distribution function. I'm giving the stream value followed by the mean and the standard deviation. So if I compile the code, before I run the simulation, what do you expect to happen or be printed here in the output panel? Because remember, we used a stream of 10 that has a seed value of 400. We're now using a stream of 50, which we know has a different seed value. So you should expect different values this time. Run the simulation, reset, and that's exactly what we get. We get a different set of numbers. And if we check our work, we can just run the simulation again, reset, and we get the same set again. Now what happens if you use a stream that's you know not in the layout? Well, you're gonna get a different set of numbers every time you run the simulation. So if we use a seed of, let's say 70, you know, this stream does not exist in the layout. So when we compile our code, run the simulation, we get a different set of numbers. If we reset, we're gonna get a completely different set of numbers this time as well. So if you want control, you can use those 64 streams that come with the layout and just give it, you know, whatever seed value you want. Let's reset the simulation. And to review our work, let's go to the help tab. Click Python API to access its reference guide. And we talked about VC component. So let's go there and go to methods. We use this method called create property to add a property to the component. We also use the get property method to find a property in the component. 
And if we go to VC property, we can see that it has an attribute called distribution, which is of type string. And this is where you can define an expression using these functions. So normal function, a log normal, uniform, exponential, and so on. Now, if you want to use a stream and seed value with a distribution that's different from all the others you have in the layout, you can use this property here called random stream. And you can use an index value of integer between 0 to 63. Or you can also use the stream number when you define the function you want to use here. We also talked about those random streams that you can access from the application objects. So let's go to VC application. And in properties, you can scroll down. And you can find the item from here using this property called layout items. But a different way is to click methods and use that find layout method I shown you in the video. So if we scroll down, here's that method. And the name of the layout item you're looking for is called random seeds. Let's close this out. And this completes the video. If you have any more questions, please feel free to visit our forum at forum.visualcomponents.com. And as always, I hope you have a wonderful day.